Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video. Did you know that this week, this very week, happened one of the biggest global wine events, if not the biggest global wine event? Yes, of course, I'm talking about Beaujolais Nouveau. On Thursday, the world celebrated this just fermented wine from France. And Beaujolais Nouveau is quite a good wine to have in mind for the upcoming holiday season because it's nice, it's simple, it's fruity, it's versatile, it's festive, it's joyful, it's pleasing, it's pleasant. So let's go and learn more about what is this Beaujolais Nouveau phenomenon and learn more about the wine. And I will be tasting with you, for you, a few examples, the red wines, but also the rosé version, which I actually didn't know existed, and a white Nouveau, newly fermented white wine. Let's go. Beaujolais Nouveau is the name given to wines coming from the Beaujolais wine region of France, which are released almost immediately after harvest, a few weeks after the grape harvest. Nouveau being French for new. Generally, Beaujolais Nouveau is one of the very first new wines from the Northern Hemisphere released from the new vintage. In fact, Beaujolais Nouveau is one of the rare wines from the Northern Hemisphere that you can find before Christmas that features the same year on the label as the current year. Of course, you can find Southern Hemisphere wines from that year because those are harvested six months earlier, around March or April, from Argentina, Chile, Australia or New Zealand, for example, so you might be able to find some of those as well. But from Europe or the United States, where Beaujolais Nouveau are some of the very first wines that you will be able to find at your local wine shop for the current year. Now, one of the common questions and one of the important aspects of the Beaujolais Nouveau is that the release of Beaujolais Nouveau happens on the same date worldwide. No one can taste this very wine before that date anywhere, meaning that wineries have to plan shipping the wines in advance to the United States, to Japan, Asia, Australia, all around the world. Beaujolais Nouveau is celebrated in 110 different countries at the same time, the same day. Knowing this about 195 countries in the world, Beaujolais Nouveau being celebrated in 110 of those countries is quite staggering and it deserves to be called a global event. Probably the biggest global wine event in fact, or at least the most universal one. What I quite like about Beaujolais Nouveau is that it's like a celebration of the new grape harvest like there has been for centuries and centuries in many little villages and small towns around here, around France, but also in Italy, in Spain, where, you know, villagers gathered to cheer with the new wine. But now it's everywhere around the world and this is an event that is shared. The new wine, the new joy of a new wine is shared and celebrated worldwide. Beaujolais Nouveau is made from the local Beaujolais grape that they grow there, the French grape called Gamay. They grow in the Beaujolais wine region of France, as we said. It is made using a special winemaking technique, though, called the carbonic maceration. Carbonic maceration, a process where the entire grape bunches, without pressing, are trapped in a tank full of carbon dioxide. That sounds horrible, but for grapes, it's actually quite a good thing. This naturally helps bringing out the natural fruitiness of the grapes. It amplifies notes of banana, notes of strawberry, of pear, which results in Beaujolais Nouveau's being very pleasing, simple and easy to enjoy because they're so very upfront fruity. It also helps with making wines that are light in tannins, fruity, as we said, therefore enjoyable to drink, to have straight away without having to age the wine, neither at the winery prior to release, nor at your cellar after buying the wine. It's just ready now 
just a few weeks after harvest, ready and pleasing to have. You can essentially gulp it while the wine is about one month and a half old, which is not very common at all. Generally, it takes six months, one year, two years to get a wine ready, not with Beaujolais Nouveau. So let's dig into Georges Duboeuf. So this is the biggest producer of Beaujolais Nouveau in France and of course in the world. One of the producers that you are quite likely to find in your local area at your local wine shop. But there are of course a variety of smaller producers making also Beaujolais Nouveau. So what do we get when we buy a Beaujolais Nouveau wine? Well, first you are getting a wine with quite a dense uh, color intensity, but it's not overly dark because Beaujolais Nouveaux at the end of the day are rather light and festive wines. They're not your big, intense, bulky, powerful wines. They're meant to be fairly light. Still the color now, they work really well on the colors of the Beaujolais Nouveau. So it's pretty dark and you will notice that it is very purple and that's what happens with a very new wine because the new wine starts purple and then it sort of uh, well, goes towards redder and then more orange hues so it starts really purple and that's what you get when you smell a Beaujolais Nouveau Wow, you will notice extremely fruity, very obvious fruity aromas. A lot of people talk with Beaujolais Nouveau of aromas of banana, banana, of strawberries, of fresh raspberries. So it's pungently upfront fruity in your face. A lot of very almost like lollies, banana lollies and strawberries. So sometimes Beaujolais Nouveau is criticized for this, but it makes it really appealing, really tempting, really easy to enjoy. Hmm. So on the palate, it's dry, it's light, it's acidic, it's lively, it's got an oily texture. Um, the tannins are very discreet, they're a little bit velvety, there's a slight edge to them, a little bit salivating, but overall this is pleasing, this is easy, this is joyful. You get this explosion of grapefruit, lemon, together with strawberry and touches of banana, touches of pear, so it's very lively just very fruity but you still get this vinosity if you remember we talked about vinosity you still feel that this is wine this is not a just normal you know, fruit juice it does have this vinosity this salivating feel that only wine delivers so it's a wine but it's fruity and yeah uh, it's kind of a fruit juice but mm, turned into a wine just turned into a wine and that's essentially what it's meant to be very joyful, very easy to appreciate. But let's have a taste at Beaujolais Village and see if it's a little bit bigger or how different it may be. So Beaujolais Village is a wine that is made around some specific villages that are more renowned, more famous for making, producing better wines. So they pick grapes in all of those different villages and they put them together making the Beaujolais Village Nouveau. They generally just a few dollars more expensive and supposedly they're a bit richer. Overall I think the concentration is much bigger here, there's much more acidity, a little bit more tannins as well and the explosion of aromas is much bigger as well. So this is more of a slightly more serious wine. I think this is going to be a wine more really to go with food and with rich foods, richly flavored foods. The Nouveau I think is more to enjoy early on during a meal with simple dishes, while the Village Nouveau is more going to go with the mains, with the solid uh, types of dishes during the meal. It's quite joyful as well because they use kind of original, colorful, joyful labels. So it's, yeah, really with the spirit of that celebration that I was talking about. This is actually my first time tasting a Beaujolais Nouveau Rosé. I've had my fair share of Beaujolais Nouveau red wine here in France, often as a student when you're at college or university. Well, you do gather at the end of November to celebrate Beaujolais Nouveau in the city centers and it's very joyful, very festive. It's very, very big and uh, quite common in France to celebrate this. So I've had my fair share of uh, red Beaujolais, but I've never had the rosé. So I'm quite curious to taste it. It looks like a rosé, salmon pink. Yeah. 
it's also extremely lively and playful. I'm actually quite surprised because you're getting this explosive uh, pear characters. It's yeah, a lot of pear, a bit of lemon, really limey. It's very, very playful, a bit of pomegranate. And that's what you get from uh, tasting a wine that's just been fermented. It tastes like nothing probably you're very used to if you're not used to tasting a wine that's just been fermented it's very very joyful very very pleasing it's actually very very lifted so yes i would say it's worth a try absolutely if you want to try and experience what a just fermented rosé wine virtually as you would taste it just out of the tank if you were to go at a winery Yep, try Beaujolais Nouveau Rosé. It's very, very pleasing, really refreshing. So obviously go for this for your appetizers before the meals. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun talking point, I think, for your upcoming celebrations as well. And I'm sure a lot of people would enjoy this. It's dry, but it's soft, it's mild, it's pleasing. Everyone would appreciate at least a glass of Beaujolais Nouveau Rosé. But let's dig into the white wine. That is not a Beaujolais, uh, but it's a Macon, uh, Macon village. So it's produced just north of Beaujolais. You have to know that Beaujolais is just at the very south of the famous Burgundy wine region. And Macon is uh, at the south of the Burgundy wine region. So this is actually more of a Burgundy white wine. So this is a little bit outside of the pure Beaujolais Nouveau celebration. This is not really a Beaujolais wine but it's made very close by and I guess it's a good opportunity to tell you that there are alternatives to Beaujolais there are other regions such as Le Languedoc here in the south of France where I live and I'm sure it exists also in the US there are other wine regions other wineries that do make a newly fermented uh, early release of newly fermented wine and it's an opportunity to let you know about this and it exists also with white wine so let's see what it tastes like if we're getting this vibrancy from the yeasty characters that i was talking about with the rosé let's see mm. so this i think is a chardonnay it does taste like a chardonnay you get these buttery elements you get a bit of tropical characters a bit of pineapple a bit of mango on the background but an explosive pear, explosive citrus, explosive lemon, explosive apple, fresh apple as well. Yeah, it's, it's pleasing, it's good. Um, I wouldn't necessarily absolutely recommend uh, that very style here. I would rather have even a simple Chardonnay. I think the estuary exuberance here doesn't necessarily add much to a standard Chardonnay but it makes for a pleasing different tasting experience if you don't like rosé if you don't like red wines and you are into white wines certainly something worth experimenting with tasting just to know whether you like this style or not and that was me for today I'm sure your local wine shop would probably have a few bottles of Beaujolais Nouveau hanging around that you can try I would suggest buy one this weekend or before Thanksgiving, before the holiday season to see whether you taste and enjoy this type of wine after what I've described to you. Give it a go if you do enjoy the style, well why not bring one at your next family celebration over the holiday season and share the style of what these wines are about. Now at least you know everything about Beaujolais Nouveau and you can talk and start a conversation about them. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you soon next week in the wonderful world of the Bonnard Private Wines video. Au revoir, bye bye.